And she obviously gave up. He might would have married her, but she probably said, no, that's all right, just come on in. The one you're living with now is not your husband. And, and uh, the mom said she dropped her. She, she thought she changed her mentality. Now she's calling Jesus sir. She called him sir. Amen. And uh, verse, uh, verse 25. And the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. For when he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said unto her, I that speaketh to thee am he. And upon this and upon this came his disciples, and they came back and tried to compel him to eat. Verse 28 says, But the woman then left her water pot and went away into the city and said unto men. Well, now she's she got influence here. She said unto men, Come see a man which told me all that I ever did. Is not this the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. And in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed or urged him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore the disciples said one to another, Have any man brought him all to eat? And Jesus said, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish the work, so on and so forth. Now skip all the way down to the 39th verse. And many of the Samaritans, how many? Many. Many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. Now how come they believed on him? They believed on him for the saying of the woman. Her words about Jesus produced faith in them about Jesus. They believed on Jesus because of her sayings, the sayings of the woman. She went and told them about a man. And that's how Jesus got famous by it being noised abroad. That's what happened to the lady with the issue of blood when she had heard of Jesus. Somebody evidently came to her because she's quarantined. She can't come out because she's got a hemorrhage. But they kept telling her, and they kept telling her. She kept, faith came. She believed. She said, if I can, I will. And if he's coming, somebody told blind Bartimaeus about it. He said, I can't see, but I can hear the roar of the crowd. And the mom said, he heard the roar of the crowd. Oh, who, 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 who's that? Who, who's that? Somebody, who, 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 what's, who, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? He heard the roar of the crowd. And somebody said, Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he said, this is my chance. Jesus, 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 thy son of David, have mercy upon me. And the Bible said, they said, shut up, Barnabas. Shut that crying up. And the Bible said, he cried yet the more. See, you got to be desperate. <laughs> you, you, you're not going to just, you could get healed at home. Thank God for media and streams. And the flow of the anointing coming home. But sometimes, if you're in proximity and can get to a meeting, you need to get to where the anointing is. Effort, the anointing accommodates effort. The lady with the issue of blood couldn't get out. She wasn't supposed to get out, but she broke quarantine. She broke rules and said, I'm getting out. Bartimaeus said, don't tell me to shut up. I'm listening for the roar of the crowd. When he passed by, I'm going to cry out, Jesus, Jesus, shut up, Bartimaeus. I'm not going to shut up. This is my chance. Yeah. Amen. Bible said he cried yet to one. Jesus stopped and turned. Glory. He recognized the cry yes. above the regular roar yes. of the crowd. And he says, go bring that man hither to me. Yes. And they came to Bartimaeus and said, the master call it for thee. And he pulled off that jacket because he knew this is my chance. This is my chance. The jacket was a legal license to beg. He threw off his beggar's garment implying I'm about to receive I'm about to be delivered from being blind. I'm not going to be blind anymore. This is my chance. The master has called for me. And he came to Jesus and said, What do you need, blind son of Timaeus? He said, My eyes, Lord, that I might see. He says, According to your faith, Bartimaeus, so be it unto thee. And the Bible says, Eyes was open, and he began to rejoice. Can I tell you what the Bible says he did after that? We're going to cover all of these cases. See, I got till, uh, till uh, the rapture to finish this. 
So ain't no use in me nor you getting in a hurry. You don't know these things, so I'm telling you about these things over and over again. I'm going fast, but I'm telling you about these things. And the Bible says, Bartimaeus got in the crowd and started following Jesus from that day. Yes. He ain't blind no more. No. He don't need a, garment, a beggar's garment anymore. After you get healed, you can get a job. Amen. Say amen. amen. I said after you healed, you don't need the cup on the corner. After you get healed, you might not need the welfare or the check. I know people who get paid for their condition. And there's some people that have been in the healing line before said, no, not that I get paid for that. They don't want to be healed for that. Just something else because that's what, no, if I get healed, I get, pay, I get my check. They'll cut my check off. Oh, are you kidding? God wants to give you a whole business. Hallelujah. More than that condition paying you. Amen. 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 But the point I'm making is, you got to get out of your comfort zone. Yes. Four men had a friend. They toted him where I come from. Some people carry. They, we tote in Louisiana where I come from. We tote. And we tote and reach. Reach that here. And they toted him perhaps for days. And they couldn't get him in because of the crowd. And they said, we didn't come too far uh, to be locked out. Bartimaeus could, I mean, the, 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 the man on the pallet could say, well, that's okay. Must not have been the will of God for me to get it today. No, no, no. They said, no, uh-uh, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. We're going to get you in there if we had to climb up on top of the house. And they did. Amen. See, that's faith. And, and he said, whoa, whoa, now, wait, now, be careful. No, 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 we don't carry you this far. Uh, we're going to get you in. We got to tear up the roof. And they did. And the Bible said they lowered him. They put a, a ropes around him. I got a picture of it on the front of I got a series out there on the table called, <clears throat> called Healing and Righteousness. And, the, and there's a picture of an open roof and four men lowering a man on a pallet right before Jesus. Amen. And Jesus seeing their faith. Don't you think that interrupted the meeting? Somebody's up there making noise while you're preaching and Oh, there's a, and then dust flying and boys and the whole meeting then stopped and they lowered the man right before Jesus. He could have called the police for obstruction of public prop, uh, private property. But no, he's a carpenter. Can I tell you something about that meeting? It was at his house. Amen. It was at his house. Amen. So nothing was said. He's a carpenter. He can fix that with words or with tools. Amen. And they lowered the man through the roof before Jesus and everybody, the scribes and the Pharisees and the sad you sees. <laughs> and all these other seas, they was coming to see and not to, not to receive. Yes. And the Bible said the power was present to heal them. Yes. But them didn't get healed. Yeah. They just watching. Yes. Sad you see. See, the Pharisees believed in life after death and spirit. The Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in you had a spirit. They didn't believe in life after death. They didn't believe in nothing. That's why they were sad, you see. Amen. <laughs> I get that from Charles Capps. <laughs> well, they lowered the man right before Jesus. And the mom said him looking up, seeing their faith. Now, he didn't wait till they, they got the man in. The mom said he looked up and said, cheer up. Be of good cheer, your sins be forgiven thee. He knew the man's condition was based upon sinful condemnation. So you can be so condemned over a sin in your life, condemnation gives the devil the right to ride your back. Sickness and disease thrive on guilt, fear, and condemnation. The first thing Jesus told the man, your sins be forgiven. And the Pharisees and Sadducees got mad. And he said, which is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, arise, take up thy bed, and walk, that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. Then he turned to the sick of the palsy and said, sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, rise up, take up thy bed, and go to thine own house. And when the man made the effort, the anointing met the effort. Amen. He couldn't walk. Jesus said, rise up and walk. But I'm here because I can't walk. But you do believe you're here because you tried to get to me, don't you? You tried to get to me. So me, Jesus, is saying to you, rise up, take up that bed and walk. See, the man missed a sermon. I never said that before in my life. 
He missed the sermon, but he still heard the words. The word said, your sins be forgiven thee. Rise up, take up your bed and walk. Now, the point I want to make to you tonight is it's time for us to start believing in the power of words. Amen. Say that tonight. tonight I, start I start to believe, to believe afresh, and afresh and anew in the power of words. The power of words. See, we, 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 we've cliche clickish and we get nothing. Even the, I'm talking to the charismatic, yeah. spirit-filled, supposed to know the Bible people. We, every charismatic can quote Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah, it does come, but it don't work because it comes. It works because you believe it. Faith comes, but it, the Bible doesn't say it don't work because it comes. It works because you believe and do it. And then it never said it stay it after it get it there. It said it cometh. It's in the continual, perfect, present tense. Faith cometh and cometh and cometh, meaning the word of God has to have a continual flow into your ear gate. Because faith yesterday won't heal Anthony today. Eggs eaten last week for breakfast won't fill me up for breakfast this morning. I need eggs this morning. Same eggs, but I need to eat them, implying I need to eat them all the time. My faith as a pastor, as a preacher, grows stale at times. If I don't feed my faith, if I don't nourish my faith, if I see, I can tell you all kind of faith stories that worked for me in yesteryear, and every one of them is true. I, I wouldn't be lying about one of them. At that point, my faith was active and believing God, but I need active faith today to believe for what I need today. Give us this day our daily bread. The manna fell every day, amen. You have to, the blessings of the Lord come upon us daily. You have to, faith has to be as fresh as break, baked bread in the morning. Amen. Has to be fresh from God. Amen. You don't need to know all of the Bible all of the time, but you need to know some of the Bible all the time. And one scripture obeyed and believed can heal you, can deliver you, can prosper you. The Lord said to Norval Hayes when there was a, uh, a person, uh, he, uh, he was in a meeting, and uh, the pastor asked, I know I'm all over the place, but I, I, you know, I don't got all day, and I, and I got you here tonight, and, and I might as well tell you everything while I got you. You can decipher through it and listen to it again and again and again. Somebody was in the hospital dying, unconscious, in the hospital on the ventilator. The pastor asked Norval Hayes, uh, would you come uh, to the hospital with me and, and pray for this particular young man? And uh, Norma Hayes said, well, I don't have much time, but I'll go down there. Which, so Norma Hayes went down to the hospital. And um, when he got there, he said he went in the room, and there was a man uh, in the room uh, hooked up to all kind of devices, and he was on life support. And Norma Hayes said, I've never seen anybody breathe every once in a while. He said, this fellow breathe every once in a while. If you know Norval Hayes and his Tennessee accent, he says, well, my dear brother, sister, he said, this man breathe every once in a while. We were in the room and he'd breathe. <gasps> and then we wait, we wait, we wait, and then he exhale, go. And then he said, some time would go by. We think, well, that's his last breath, he's dead. And then a few minutes later, he go. <gasps> He said to breathe every once in a while. And so Norman Hayes knew he was in a, uh, 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 he's at death door. If not dead, he's at death door. Well, he didn't have much time. The, the man's wife was in there with him, young girl in there with him in the 20s. And uh, the man in, in unconscious can't believe for himself. So Norman Hayes grabbed the lady. See, the mom said the two shall become one. Now, a husband can believe for his wife, and a wife can believe for her husband if they're unconscious depending on what laws, what was said, or what happened prior to him getting there. See, you can set laws in motion and shut the door, nobody can help you, because the laws that were set in motion by you can only be reversed by you. So, uh, Norma Hayes prayed a little prayer for the unconscious man. That's all he could do, pray the prayer for him. He had to leave because he got to go out, got to preach another meeting that night. And uh, 
he said he was about to leave the hospital room feeling helpless. And the Spirit of God said to him, rose up in his belly and said, Mark eleven twenty three 23 would heal him if it's obeyed. Mark eleven twenty three 23 will heal him if it's obeyed. And Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, Jesus said, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. And so Noah he said he grabbed, the, he grabbed the young lady. He said, listen to me, darling. Listen to me, darling. Listen to me. The Lord just spoke to me. He said, Mark eleven twenty three 23 will heal him if it's obeyed. He says, now he's unconscious. He can't believe for himself. And you're his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. You can believe for him. And he grabbed and he says, now Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, whosoever shall say, and I want you to say, my husband will live and not die. My husband will live and not die. Say it. Now he, he, he's running out of time. He's got to go preach a meeting and he flies out the next morning. And, and, and he says, she said something like this. He said, let me hear your said. She said, well, uh, my my, my, my husband will live and not die. He said, no, 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 no. He said, say it like you mean it. Say it with authority. Say it again. My, 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 my husband will live and not die. No, no, say it again. My husband will live and not die. Say it again. My husband will live and not die. My husband will live and not die. My husband will live and not die. Say it with authority. My husband will live and not die. Say it all night, all day, every time you think about it. Every time you think about it, it comes to mind. Say it hundreds of times, thousands of times. Keep saying it and don't stop. Let me hear you say it again. My husband will live and not die. My husband will live and not die. My husband will live and not die. And I think the story goes, forgive me if I don't get the dates correctly, but in about three days, that man came off of that respiration, respi respiratory machine and started to breathe on his own, and he came out of that coma, totally healed. He just snapped to, came out of that coma, totally healed, could walk, no brain damage, because they said if he came to, he'd have so much brain damage, he'd be vegetable. But he came to, could speak plain and clear, had no brain damage, and she spoke the word over him. Mark 11, 23 will heal him if it's obeyed. See, I'm talking to you about one scripture. See, that's what I'm saying. One scripture. One scripture. Mark 11, 23 will heal him if it's obeyed. There's enough healing juice. There's enough healing venom. There's enough healing virtue. And one scripture believed and obeyed to bring you off of that bed, to rise up you out of that wheelchair, to get that tumor and cancer out of your body. One scripture believed, spoken, and obeyed is enough to heal you. Amen. Mark eleven twenty three will heal you if it's obeyed. Well, Mark eleven twenty three brought Kennedy Hagen off of a deathbed. Five medical doctors said he had to die. You don't have one chance in a million to live. You're paralyzed. You're fading away. You're going just like medical science said you're going to have to go. He started dying at 15 before he turned 16, and the doctors gave him up to die. Incurable blood disease, deformed heart paralysis, born premature, you have to die. But one verse of scripture, believed and obeyed, brought him off of the deathbed. And it'll bring you off of your deathbed. It'll bring you out of whatever, whatever scripture, whatever situation you're in, if you take the word and you might have to say it till you believe it, get it out of your head and get it in your spirit. And the very moment it drops out of your head into the heart, for Romans 10, 10 says, with the heart, man, believe it. And then that's when it starts to work for you. Amen. Amen. Now, I didn't come to say none of that, but it's all good. It's all good, isn't it? Amen. Now, go back to the lady at the well. Let's talk a little bit more about her. <clears throat> the lady at the well. This is my closing point. Verse 39 says, many of the Samaritans, many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the sayings of the woman which testified, he told me all I ever did. Many of them believed on him. How come? Because of the sayings of the woman. So <clears throat> when the Samaritans, verse 40, were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. Look at verse 41. And many more believed because of his own words. 
What made them start to believe in Jesus? His own words. See, Jesus, they first believed because of the words of the lady. They got secondary information. But Jesus tarried there two days, and he began to preach, and they believed on him <clears throat> because of his own words. Amen. Look at verse 42. And said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy sayings, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this indeed, this is indeed the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Savior of the world. Amen. I'm talking about believing words. Amen. I'm talking about hearing words. Jesus' words ignited faith in the Samaritans, and many more believed upon him because of his own words. Can you say amen? amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. John chapter 4, just back up. Uh, uh, well, no, no, back up. That's the same chapter. Same chapter here. This is a nobleman's son. <clears throat> Verse 40, so Jesus came into Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. He must believe what he heard. He must believe that he heard that Jesus had power. See, he heard that Jesus had turned the water into wine. He knew that he was a miracle worker. <clears throat> Come down and heal my son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down ere my child dies. Now, the man wasn't, look up at me, I got a few minutes left. The man wasn't in faith initially. He just was desperate. Desperation is not faith, but desperation can lead you to faith. The man was of some kind of prestige, and he wanted Jesus to move on him, his behalf, because he was a man of means. Sometimes people with money think you should jump because they say jump because they got money or they got authority. See, he, Jesus said, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Do you think Jesus knew what he was talking about? You think Jesus is just missing words and speaking out of words? No, Jesus was, has the anointing without measure. Jesus knew the man wasn't in faith. He said, except you see signs. See, he had heard Jesus had turned the water into wine. He wanted to see something. Come down and heal my son then. He's at the point of death. Jesus said, except you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. He knew the man wasn't in faith. Don't, when preachers, listen to me. <clears throat> when I'm standing up ministering or any other preacher, they have the responsibility of hearing from God at that moment in that service. They're responsible for it. Sometimes they may have to correct people. Sometimes they may tell people to sit down. Now, you can be nice. You don't have to be cruel or mean. But sometimes the person that's ministering, he may know a little bit more than the people that's sitting by. Jesus corrected him. He said, you won't believe except you see signs and wonders. Amen. Amen. The noble man didn't say nothing about faith. He said, Sir, come down here before my son dies. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. In other words, if you really believe I am who I say I am, if you really believe I got power, you wouldn't have to wait till I got there to see something. You would now notice you would believe my words. What Jesus is saying is that if you really believe that I am the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, then you would believe my words. Jesus put more emphasis on his word than he did on his healings. He tested the man. Go thy way, thy son live it. Look at the next verse. Look at the response of the man. <clears throat> Look at the response of the man. Go thy way, thy son live it. And the man believed. What did he believe? The word that Jesus had spoken unto him and went his way. And as he was now going down, the servant met him and told him, saying, Thy son live it. There's something about a revelation. When you're flowing in the spirit, God will send confirmation with the exact words. I could tell you stories along that line, but I'm out of time. Jesus said, Thy son live it. And this man was... Uh, I think he was two days away from his son, which would be equivalent to 16 miles. And so the man left and walking about eight miles. Don't you think the devil was talking to that man as he was walking? You believe, you, you believe that? When you get to the house, your son going to be dead. 
If he was a real preacher, if he really was who he said, well, if he would have followed me and came down to pray for your son, but he didn't. The man had an opportunity to entertain thoughts and get offended. He's walking for eight miles with the devil riding his shoulders. He hadn't seen anything. He believed the word Jesus said, thy son live it. He said to Jesus, my son is at the point of death. If you don't come now, he could die. Jesus said, I'm not coming. If you believe who I am, then I say your son live it. He turned and believed the word. No action, didn't see nothing, didn't feel nothing. He's walking by faith, believing the word. Yes. The devil is talking to him, but he made a choice. Yes. No, Jesus is who he say he was. I'm believing his word. And he met a man the next day coming and yelled to him, Thy son live it. He heard the same. He kept hearing that. I believe he kept saying that. I believe he kept walking saying, My son live it. My son live it. Jesus said, My son live it. I believe it. My son live it. Jesus said, My son live it. And then the next day he met a man and said, Hey, your son live it. Bam, confirmed it. And then he asked, by what hour? Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. Verse 52. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left. He had an infection that was killing him. So the father knew that it was at that same hour in which Jesus said unto him, thy son live it and himself believed, and his whole house. Woo! Woo! This miracle turned to, see a miracle don't stop what the person is done on. God does bigger things. God loved not the, just a man's son. The whole community heard about it and saw it. The whole community saw that this man's son live it, and now this man and his family believe it. That man had influence in the whole community. That one miracle. One miracle influenced that whole family, and I'm sure that whole community. Thy son live it. I'm talking to you about the importance of believing words. Jesus went into all of the synagogue teaching, preaching, and then healing. Preaching and teaching ignites, excites, and stimulates faith. Always hear God's word first, and then look to receive your healing second. Amen. Thank you for watching our show. For additional teaching by Brother Strotter or to hear this message in its entirety, go to our Anthony Strotter Ministries YouTube channel or Facebook page. If you would like to support this ministry or become a partner today, go to www.anthonystrotter.com.